by the with the first concept uh, that is see we are going to start with the conceptual database design using the entity relationship models or you can say the ER models so for that first of all we need to study some of the basic terminologies which we use in the ER model and uh, let me write down the topic name it is the conceptual database design conceptual database design using the entity relationship model using the entity relationship model using the entity relationship model okay so this is the conceptual database design so in the conceptual database design so first of all we have to study what are the different components of er model what are the different components of ER models. These components act as a basic terminologies which we use thoroughly or throughout the ER model. You must have studied these terminologies before. So the first terminology is called as the entity. What exactly is an entity? So an entity represents an object in the real world. An entity represents an object in the real world. In the real world okay so for example we have nouns students objects books accounts these things are entity right or this is some of the, this one more definition of entity that means object like this entities are representing some things for example we may be having an entity as a student a student is an entity in the same way we may be having an entity as a book a book is an entity here student and the book both of them are acting as a physical entity are acting as a physical entity in the real world right in the same way we may be having an entity called as account when i'm saying account now this account is acting as a logical entity in a real world it is acting as a logical entity in a real world okay so next thing is what is called as an entity set what is called as an entity set so entity set is a collection of similar entities entity set is also called as collection of similar entities similar entities okay like we have students right so student is you now if we just take one single student that is kind of an entity because that is representing an object but if we take some collection of similar students or again similar objects and it is called as entity set so this entity set is generally represented by a rectangle like this it is represented by a rectangle now this rectangle is containing representing a student as an entity set right next is we have something called as relationships something called as relationships relation ships okay so the relationship can also be called as what is the association among different entities as a relationship generally defines or denotes what is the association among different entities among the entities it is called as the relationships okay now for example we have reading or buying these are called as relationship like reading or buying or buying these are representing the relationships okay so when i'm saying reading and buying for example if you have a book and a student then student may be reading the book or someone may be buying something a person may be buying something right so that is why the relationships are generally represented with the verbs and entities are generally represented with nouns entities are generally represented with nouns and the relationships are generally represented with the verbs okay and then we have something called as relationship set relationship set so what is a relationship set relationship set is the collection of similar relationships the collection of collection of similar relationships relationships so this relationship sets are generally denoted by a diamond like figure 
so if I am going to draw it so it will be something like this we will be having a diamond like figure right and this diamond like figure, figure for example we have something the relationship like book or you can say read so read is is the representing a relationship set it is representing a relationship set now the next definition is related to what are called as attributes what are called as attributes okay so attributes are uh, things which describes an entity or which gives the properties of an entity these are things which describes an entity which describes an entity they are called as attributes right for example we may be having a student as an entity and these attributes are generally denoted in oval shape okay so assume this is a student this is an entity which is representing a student now we may be having different attributes of these students okay so like uh, I'm going to represent it like this okay so this these are the attributes of the students student entity so we can have a student attribute like a student can have a roll number a student can have a name a student can have a branch in which it is studying so these are the things which are describing this particular attribute in the same way generally if I am saying attribute attribute means we have name or age of a person right these things represent the attributes for a person okay now we can we can represent these things related to a person for example if I am saying a student now for this student I can represent the same information like this we have student as an entity in student entity we have roll number we have name and we have branch we have roll number name and branch now this is representing something called as intention something called as intention but if I'm going to give you an exact values like if I'm saying the roll number is 26 name is Himanshu and branches computer science now these are the exact values now this is also called as extension it is also called as extension so intention means I'm just representing that the uh, entity is student and these are the attributes of the student now if I take a particular instance particular instance that rule number 26 name Himanshu branch computer science and this particular instance is also called as extension okay now these attributes can be different classified into different types you can say attributes there are different classifications of attributes that is called as classification classification of attributes classification of attributes so you can say attributes can be classified into different types like we can have a simple attribute we can have a simple attribute we can have a composite attribute we can have a composite attribute then we can have something called as a single valued attribute single valued attribute or we can have something called as a multi valued attribute multi valued attribute we can have something called as a stored attribute stored attribute or we can have a derived attribute we can have a derived attribute and we can have something called as a complex attribute a complex attribute again I am repeating we have a simple attribute composite attribute single valued attribute multi valued attribute stored attribute derived attribute composite attribute or complex attribute and we can also have something called as a key attribute something called as a key attribute in the next video let us look at about what are these different kinds of attributes what is a simple attribute and composite etc